I was not sure whether I could kill a person. And I found uh, in the ditch 28 of our servicemen with their hands tied behind their back and shot in the back of the head. And I changed my mind. Imagine a violently divided Asian peninsula, growing tensions between the superpowers of the time and an ideological conflict that triggered a brutal fight. From the alleys of Seoul to the mountains of North Korea, this struggle unleashed a storm of fire and steel that forever changed the destiny of the region and the balance of power in the world. We are talking about one of the most significant battles of the 20th century, the Korean War. Get ready to learn about an event with intense confrontations, political intrigues, and epic battles. Join us as we explore the background of the conflict, the military strategies, the leaders involved, and the consequences of the dispute that still persist today. Welcome once again to Military History. In the whirlwind of events that marked the last century, Korea's history was shaped by imperial invasions, geopolitical tensions, and aspirations for independence. The atrocities committed by Japanese forces left indelible scars on Korea's history, from bloody battles to indiscriminate massacres. At the beginning of the 1900s, Korea was a territory occupied by Japan, which established tight control over the peninsula. At that time, it was deemed a peaceful occupation. But in 1910, the country fell under the ominous shadow of imperial domination, marking the beginning of a painful era of despotism and suffering for the Korean people. For decades, Koreans were subjected to a relentless and violent colonial regime where their culture, identity, and freedom were mercilessly trampled upon. In addition to political and military repression, Koreans also suffered immensely economically and socially. They were forced to work in inhumane conditions in Japanese mines and factories with long hours of forced labor and meager wages. Discriminatory policies and racial segregation practices further deepened the gap between the locals and their Japanese oppressors. Korean resistance against imperial occupation was brave but costly. There were numerous uprisings and acts of defiance, but Japanese retaliation was swift and ruthless. Japan's army had more resources and was better trained than the rebels, whom they killed mercilessly at the slightest hint of disobedience. However, the spirit of opposition never completely faded away. Combative locals, together with Japan's weakened post-atomic bomb situation, led to the withdrawal of invading troops in 1945, along with the end of World War II. Korea's liberation after the war opened a new and complex chapter for the country. With Japan's surrender, the peninsula was divided into two occupation zones, with the Soviet Union taking control to the north of the 38th parallel and the United States to the south. This fragmentation was a temporary solution but quickly turned into an ideological dividing line, foreshadowing the unbearable tensions of the Cold War. In 1948, events precipitated with the creation of two separate states, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea in the north, formerly backed by the Soviet Union, and the Republic of Korea in the south, openly supported by the United States. This political duality laid the groundwork for the armed conflict that would erupt in 1950. Kim Il-sung, a guerrilla leader who had fought against Japanese occupation, emerged as the popular leader in the North. With the support of the Russians, he established a communist regime and proclaimed the foundation of a nation openly in favor of Stalin's dictatorship. He also developed a political ideology known as Yuke, which emphasized national self-reliance, political independence, and self-confidence. During his rule, a cult of personality was instructed around his figure, presenting him as the infallible and supreme leader of the nation. The agreement for the withdrawal of Soviet troops the following year paved the way for the consolidation of Kim Il-sung's regime, whose leadership would endure for decades. On the other hand, the president of South Korea was Syngman Rhee, a prominent and controversial political leader in the peninsula's history. After studying in the United States, he returned and became involved in politics. His approach and leadership were not devoid of controversy, 
as during his presidency, he adopted authoritarian policies and faced accusations of corruption and abuse of power. He was extremely Western-oriented as well as anti-communist, and in some cases, he had been labeled as racist. Both he and Kim Il-sung, with their charismatic personalities, were going to be crucial in the development of the looming conflict on the horizon. The outbreak of the Korean War in June 1950 shocked the world and triggered one of the most intense disputes of the Cold War. This military conflict erupted when North Korean forces, personally led by Kim Il-sung, unexpectedly invaded South Korea. The aggression prompted an immediate response from the international community and marked the beginning of a confrontation that would have lasting repercussions in the region and in the balance of world power. Tensions on the Korean Peninsula were clearly aligned with the collision between the greatest powers of that time, the United States and the Soviet Union. These two opposing regimes had opposite aspirations to unify the Asian country under their own guidelines, which generated a climate of instability and confrontation. The ultimate goal of the offensive was to overthrow Ri and turn Korea into a fully communist country. The official start of the conflict mobilized troops from several countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia, among others, who joined forces to support South Korea and defend it from the North Korean aggression. The battles left a heartbreaking number of casualties on both sides. The onset of hostilities laid bare the deep ideological and geopolitical divisions that fractured the world at that time highlighting the fragility of peace in a context of confrontation between two antagonistic political systems. The memory of Hiroshima and Nagasaki was still fresh in the global collective memory, and the entire planet feared that this conflict could become the gateway to World War III. Throughout the war, the armed forces of both Koreas fought fierce battles in mountainous and urban terrain. Offensives and counteroffensives ensued with constant shifts in territorial control. South Korea, supported by UN forces, managed to withstand the North Korean invasion and regain part of the initially lost territory. Let's listen to a veteran speaking about the confrontations. And uh, uh, you just had to uh, uh, fire at everything you could and uh, get as much uh, concentrated fire on them to uh, it didn't make any difference whether you got the lead man in the first wave or whether the second, the third, or the fourth. Just as long as you disturbed that so that they would uh, have so many uh, casualties they'd have to retreat because there was no chance of them coming up and overrunning you. Now when they did come up and was successful in, in overrunning, and that's when you got into hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. And uh, uh, that's no fun. It's uh, life-threatening. You just have to do the best you can. The development of the battles was marked by the direct intervention of China, which sent troops to support North Korea and prevent the total defeat of the communist regime. China's support for North Korea dates back to the Chinese Revolution of 1949, when Mao Zedong's followers took power in the country. Mao and Kim Il-sung established a close ideological and political relationship based on their shared commitment to communism and their desire to challenge Western influence in Asia. China saw the opportunity to intervene in support of its territorial ally and protect its own strategic interests. Concerned about the possibility of having U.S. troops near its border and the prospect of a Korea unified under Western influence. Mao's forces, known as the Chinese People's Volunteer Army, launched a series of counter-offensives against U.N. troops led by the United States. In this way, they managed to stabilize the front near the border between North Korea and China. The support was crucial to prevent defeat and maintain the division of the peninsula. However, 
This intervention also came at a significant cost in terms of human lives and resources. It is estimated that tens of thousands of soldiers from Zedong's ranks died in combat. The confrontation was bloody from the outset. Among the most significant clashes of the conflict was the Battle of Incheon in September 1950, where UN forces carried out a successful landing on the western coast of South Korea. Also notable is the Battle of Chosan Reservoir in November and December 1950, where intense fighting occurred between Western militias and Chinese and North Korean troops. The course of the Korean War was also marked by the suffering of the civilian population, who endured bombings, forced displacement, and atrocities committed by both sides. The war situation left a devastating toll of millions dead and wounded, as well as destruction of infrastructure and cities. War crimes committed have not been adequately documented, but both factions from the North and South violated, looted, and massacred entire communities of civilians. Let's listen to a soldier talking about his experience in this event. We landed at a place called Incheon. Some of the highest tides in the world were at Incheon. And we could get, a sh we could get uh, some Marines ashore, uh, but we couldn't pray, give them protection until the tides came in that night. So it was a risk that uh, General MacArthur wanted to take. The president and all of his cabinet were against it, but uh, General MacArthur convinced them that he could do it, that the Marines could do it. The international repercussions of this conflict were significant as it represented one of the first major armed confrontations of the Cold War. President Harry S. Truman was one of the main advocates for mobilizing military and diplomatic forces to support South Korea. The U.S. intervention on the peninsula was seen as a hostile display of its commitment to containing the spread of communism in Asia. On the other hand, the Soviet Union, under the leadership of the tyrant Joseph Stalin, provided logistical and material support to North Korea, although it avoided direct intervention in the conflict. The Russian dictator, known for his strategic and bloody coldness, decided not to involve Soviet troops and thus avoid their own casualties. However, his participation in the conflict underscored the ideological rivalry between the superpowers and exacerbated tensions in the region. Beyond the chessboard of international politics and power relations between countries, there was a people who suffered the criminal consequences of this conflict. Amidst the chaos and brutality, the massacre of Sinchin emerges as one of the darkest and most heartbreaking episodes. Located in the South Huanghe province of North Korea, this village witnessed a tragedy that would deeply scar the memory of its inhabitants. The massacre took place in July 1950, shortly after the conflict began when North Korean forces advanced on the village with the aim of eliminating any opposition resistance. What followed was an orgy of violence and destruction, where men, women, and children fell victim to unimaginable atrocities. North Korean troops carried out summary executions, mass rapes, and ruthless looting, leaving a trail of death and desolation in their wake. The battle for Sinchin became a symbol of the brutality of war, where human life was devoid of value and cruelty reigned without limits. Survivors of the massacre witnessed horrors they could never forget. Throughout the conflict, countless massacres, bloody battles, and war crimes occurred, in addition to the one mentioned in Sinchon. Among the most dramatic is also the massacre of Nogunri. This heinous act stands out as one of the most tragic and chilling episodes of the entire conflict. Located in Gyeonggi Province, south of South Korea, No Gunri was the scene of an atrocity that horrified the world. The No Gunri massacre occurred in July 1950 when U.S. forces, amidst the chaos and confusion of war, opened fire on a group of refugees sheltering helplessly under a bridge in the village. American troops, mistakenly believing that the people hiding were North Korean infiltrators, launched an attack that lasted several days leaving hundreds of civilians dead and wounded. Those who managed to escape recounted stories of horror and desperation, describing how they were attacked with machine guns, bombarded with mortars, and with hand grenades as they tried to flee in search of safety. 
According to chilling accounts, some survivors had to cover themselves with the shattered bodies of their loved ones and pretend to be dead so that the American militias would overlook them. The Nogun Ri massacre became a turning point in the public perception of the Korean War. The massacre brought to light the brutal realities of the conflict and triggered intense official scrutiny of the criminal actions of American forces on the battlefield. The incident sparked investigations and debates about war crimes and human rights. American citizens themselves began to question not only the conflict itself, but also the methods employed in it. To highlight one last atrocious and condemnable event, let's talk about the Bodo League massacre that occurred in mid-1950. Before the onset of hostilities, President Ri had coerced around 300,000 communist militants and political opponents to enroll in an official re-education movement known as the Bodo League. Under the pretext that participation in this organization would save them from prison, many people were forced to join, even those with no party affiliation. But what was actually happening is that they were being registered on a deadly blacklist. Metaphorically speaking, they were being marked as cattle destined for the slaughterhouse. To illustrate the detention carried out by Ri's government, let's see American collaborating soldiers taking Korean prisoners. Once hostilities officially began, the South Korean government took advantage of the registration of these individuals to carry out summary executions, considering all members of the Bodo League as possible subversives. This unleashed a brutal and unprecedented massacre, where communists and alleged communists were cold-bloodedly murdered without trial or prior investigation. For the killers, it was like fishing in a fish tank full of captive fish the exact death toll remains a matter of debate among specialists to this day. The massacre was perpetrated by South Korean police and soldiers with the apparent complicity of the United States military. American official documents revealed that their soldiers witnessed and photographed the carnage, suggesting they were fully aware of it and approved of it. The South Korean government initially falsely attributed the massacre to the communists led by Kim Il-sung, trying to deflect responsibility and cover up the crimes committed. From the outset, North Korean executions of South Korean rightists received more media attention as they served to demonize the Soviet and Chinese regimes. For four decades, the South Korean government strove to conceal the massacre, prohibiting survivors from revealing what happened under threat of torture and death. However, in the 1990s, several mass graves were excavated the discoveries raised public awareness of the atrocity committed by President Ri in collusion with senior American officials. At that time, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of South Korea investigated the events surrounding this political violence, which had long managed to remain unpunished. The estimates of the number of dead vary widely, but historians and experts suggest that the figures range from at least 110,000 to 200,000 innocent civilians. The end of the Korean War was as sudden as its beginning. The international community had their eyes on the powers that were using the Korean people as guinea pigs as a whole and were beginning to lose significant support. The outcome came through the signing of the Armistice Agreement at Panmunjom on July 27, 1953. This agreement was signed by diplomats from North Korea, China, and the UN representing South Korea. The ceasefire established a demilitarized zone along the 38th parallel dividing the Korean peninsula where a truce was established and the exchange of prisoners was agreed upon. It is estimated that around 2 million Koreans lost their lives during this conflict, including both combatants and civilians. Additionally, about 600,000 Chinese soldiers, 37,000 Americans, 
and around 3,000 troops from other countries, such as Turkey and the United Kingdom, who were part of the UN forces, lost their lives in the war. Let's listen to the heartbreaking testimony of a veteran. One of the hardest things that I did along in the Korean War was to pick up the frozen bodies of the Marines that had been brought down from the mountainsides to the road where a truck could pick them up. The ground was frozen. We couldn't bury them. We couldn't take them out. So what we did was we used dynamite and uh, bulldozers to try to dig at least a shallow grave that we could bury our Marines in. It is worth noting that technically, the Korean War has not yet ended, as a definitive peace treaty has not been signed between the parties involved. In this sense, the peninsula remains one of the most tense and militarized areas in the world, with the persistent threat of a possible outbreak of hostilities at any moment. We are reaching the end of this installment. We look forward to reading your valuable comments and appreciate your participation. Thank you for sticking with us until the end, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episodes of Military History.